Hello and welcome to Energizing Habits, Simple Strategies for a Sustainable Healthy Lifestyle. I'm your host, Vicki Cleary, and I guide ambitious women just like you to find more focus, more energy, and more productivity so they can thrive, whether it's in business or in life, all by tapping into sustainable habit change around nutrition, movement, sleep, and stress management. Are you ready? Here we go. Hello and welcome back, my ambitious friends. All right. How has it been going for the summer so far? So we're probably at the time of recording about mid-June. So it's been getting hotter and I feel like in some ways a little busier, in some ways a little slower. So it's kind of this um, strange balance where it's just different than what we had um, in the spring. Uh, But I am of course, continuing to uh, work on my, well, I'm taking myself through the Energy to Thrive project. I've told you about that through a few of the previous episodes. And um, so just working through it, the, I believe it's the next episode that I'm going to share some of what I've learned, um, what I found for myself, the changes that I've implemented, how I'm benefiting and that kind of thing. Um, so the whole episode dedicated just to that. Um, I also shared last uh, last episode that I've released a new workshop um, of open registration for a workshop. It's a live in-person workshop. So if you're in the Wichita area, um, you're welcome to register and attend. But it is uh, my Flexibilities 2.0, which is more than just the flexibility stretches and um my fascial release that I had done in the original flexibilities uh, series. This one actually includes um, some mobility exercises, some somatic movement to help release uh, the patterns of tension and stress in the body. Uh, Of course, we we incorporate the breathing exercises that help support the practice um, as well as the nutrition that helps to support the practice. Um, So I'm really excited about this, um, up-leveled version of flexibilities. So um, there'll be a link below. So if you're interested, again, in the Wichita area, you're welcome. It's four weeks, um, all four Saturdays in July. So if you're game to come join me, please uh, get registered and come on down. Um, And also, I'm not sure if I mentioned this on the last episode or not, but we're getting ready to go to Florida. So this week, it's all about like, what are the things that we need to be able to pack? What are the things that we can get there? I mean, it's, you know, it's for it. We can still stop at the grocery store. We can still stop and buy like sunscreen. So we don't have to pack like all the things. Um, but we do have to have a plan of somewhat where we're going to pack lots of swimsuits, lots of shorts and tank tops is what I imagine. So we're getting ready for that. Super excited. Um, and yeah. That's been kind of the last two weeks. Now, as a project manager and a healthy lifestyle coach, so we're getting into today's topic, I've seen firsthand how the principles of, um, or the principles that we use in project management can also be incredibly powerful for personal transformation. And I mean, it seems like it makes sense, right? Because when you take yourself through personal transformation, that's a bit of a project, right? You've got a start, you've got an end, and there's steps in between. It's basically a project, right? But there are actually some very useful project management tools that can be used in your personal transformation and probably lots of other things, but we're talking about it for transformation. Retrospection is one of these tools. And this is one that I'm just really excited about because I use retrospection um, a lot for myself. I use it in the projects that I manage. Um, It's interesting how some people, like they get the idea and they think, oh, the idea sounds really good. But in the doing, taking the time to do, especially like projects done, and now you want me to stay and linger and talk about this thing. And yes, I do. I want you to stay and talk about this thing because... We want to find out like what went well, what didn't go well, what did we learn, right? Because you can take all that into your next project. You can take all that into your next endeavor. And then the same is true with what we do for ourselves. So 
basically you're evaluating your experience, um, what worked and what didn't, right? It's, it's about as easy as that. Um, and you actually gain valuable insights into your behaviors and decisions. So not only when you apply it to projects, but also when you apply it to yourself and your own transformation. So this practice actually helps us to understand the successes and the setbacks. So if you didn't make the progress, you can start to uncover why. And if you made really good progress, again, you can start to uncover why. Um, and it also fosters just really good self-awareness, right? So when we apply these insights as you move forward, then it allows you to make better choices, more informed choices, right? You can avoid past mistakes or have a better plan to be prepared for them. Um, and then you're just continuously improving. And that just makes the progress, you're driving that progress towards your goals, which is ultimately the point, right? So if you haven't already listened to uh, my year end retrospection episode, it's number 17. Um, it's called end of year reflection. Um, it's a great practice at the end of the year to help you close out the previous year um, and then step into the new one, right? Um, now, again, June, mid-June that we're in right now, I mean, it's a good time probably to start to do a little bit of a reflection, um, pause, reflect on your progress since the beginning of the year. Um, and, uh, you know, just like in project management, you don't wait until the end of the project necessarily. You can do it in smaller bits. You can do it in smaller phases. Um, and that's just to start to assess how things are going and so that you can actually make change so you can uh, course correct if you're actually not on the right path to get to the end goal. So you don't have to wait to the end of the year to uh, reflect on your progress towards your goals. So regular retrospection helps us to stay on track, make adjustments, and of course, celebrate our successes along the way, which is a key factor in motivating yourself, right? In keeping yourself moving. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the right direction. So regular retrospection is a continuous, continuous improvement pro oh boy, a continuous improvement practice that can transform your personal life because it allows you to recognize what is and isn't working, right? We talked about that. You can adjust your strategies to stay aligned with your goals. Um, you could also, you may find that the thing isn't working altogether and you might have to course correct and adjust the goal, change the goal. Um, and then again, celebrating your achievements and learning from the challenges. So when you start doing these reviews regularly, you're assessing more frequently and therefore, um, able to make adjustments quicker, right? So you're course correcting quicker. So the more often you do, the more you course correct and the more you really fine tune that path and can actually have success faster. Now, you really can do them as frequently as you like. Um, in uh, episode, well, there's a series of 20, 21 and 22. These episodes, uh, Plan Your Health Like a Project Manager, I take you through the different um, timeframes that you can do some retrospection, right? as you're planning, retrospecting and planning. Um, so quarterly, of course, looking at it every quarter, every three months and uh, monthly is just like it sounds. It's monthly and uh, weekly and then also daily. So again, every um, more frequent iteration that you do these, the faster you're able to course correct. And so if you're only looking at them quarterly, three months have gone by and then you're assessing your progress for three months and then having to course correct from there forward. So if you're doing them more often, then you're going to be able to course correct more often. Now, as you step into your annual, your mid-year, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily, okay, as you step down from all of those, these different frequencies actually require less and less time. So when you do an annual one, Ideally, you would spend so like significant times. You're going through the whole year, like well, 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 what didn't go well throughout the entire year. And um, when you're doing it daily, I mean, it, the day is a lot quicker in terms of duration that passed. So you can actually get through that maybe 10, 15 minutes and then you really get the hang of it, five to 10 minutes. 
um, you know, but give, give it its due, right? Like don't just rush through it. But again, you just don't have to take as much time when you're doing it more frequently. So there's that. And you still get the benefit of a course correction as you need to. Uh, but really you're reflecting on whether you made the choices to support your goals. If not, why not? And how do you success, how do you set up for success tomorrow? You know, if that's a daily thing, if you're doing it weekly, how do I set up for the for the week ahead? <clears throat> now, if you're new to the retrospection process, it is a game changer for your transformation. And I suggest if you don't have a pen and paper handy, you grab one or just you know, come back and listen to this later when you have um, something that you can write with. So you can keep these questions handy. So in its simplest form, the retrospective res retrospective consists of four questions. What went well? Um, you start with the positive, right? Because that is what kind of gets you into a good frame of mind before you go into the rest. And it makes you more, um, more apt to be receptive to any negative feedback or, um, you know, things that didn't go well when you have to talk about these, even with yourself, um, can be a little, can be a little tough pill to swallow sometimes. And so we start with the negative just to start off on the right foot. What didn't go well? The key here is to be honest, but not hurtful. Okay. So, you know, obviously if you didn't choose, make a good choice at dinner. Okay. You didn't make a good choice. It's a circumstance. There's no actual good or bad around it other than maybe it doesn't have as many vegetables as you wanted or what have you. Right. Um, but we're not putting blame on anything. We're not shaming ourselves. It's, it's just, this is the circumstances is what happened and it wasn't necessarily the way I wanted it to happen. And so there it is. So what did you learn from it is the next question. So life is all about learning from your experiences. And then how do I apply this learning is the part two of that question or the fourth question, because growth comes when we are able to apply what we've learned. Okay. So I mean, you can learn all day long that, um, you know, you have a certain way of doing things that, um, in order, you know, to hit your goal that you've got to learn this skill, but until you start doing and applying that information, you're just going to stay where you are, right? You're not actually growing. So you have to apply what you learned and that's as simple as, okay, how do I make a better decision tomorrow? Um, how do I, um, have a better plan for tomorrow? You know, do, did I, uh, make my meals the night before? So I wasn't rushed in the morning. No. Is that something I can do? Sure. Give it a try. So it's all about, it's kind of like you're experimenting. You're taking a look at what happened, what went well, what didn't go well. How can I apply it to the next day and just refine, refine, refine. And again, it really can only take a few minutes each day if you're doing it on a regular basis and just asking those questions, either honing in on a specific scenario. So it could be like my dinner choice, right? It could be the whole day. It could be, um, you know, there was a meeting or, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Uh, but again, taking that time, asking those questions, it just empowers you to make meaningful progress towards your goals. Now, when you have time for more deeper reflection, this is where those longer duration uh, sessions come in handy. So monthly, quarterly, mid-year, annually. These, I like to dig in a bit more. So here's the process. And this is the stuff that I went through in your um, end of your reflection episode and the plan your health like a project manager episodes. There's three of those. So it's basically pulling all of that into this list here. So first, take a look back. So if it's the quarter, if it's the month, if it's the year, you take a look back. Reflect on the goals. So what goals did you set uh, at the beginning of that time frame? And did you make the progress that you wanted to make? From there, what helped you make the progress that you made? What got in your way? Then you move on to celebrating your wins. What are those top one to three things that you're proud of? And again, if it's the quarter, if it's the month, if it's the year, whatever it is. Now, if it's a longer duration, you could have more than one to three wins. Um, if there's just things that, you know, you're proud of, you don't have to cap it is the point. Um, 
but it could be challenges that you took on, new things that you tried, hard decisions that you had to make. Celebrating those um, because it, it is a good thing, right? You're learning and growing from those things. And speaking of learning, the next thing is learning from your experiences. So what did you actually learn from the things that didn't go as planned? How can you apply the lessons from these situations to go forward? So that's part one. So it's multi-part. That was part one. So you go through what happened in the past. Now we're going to take a look forward. Okay. So you're going to project yourself into a future date, that specific date that your goal, you, maybe it's uh, by the end of the year because you want it just a calendar year or whatever it is before vacation, that kind of thing. What is that? due date, if you will. Um, and then what do you want to have accomplished by then? So this is where you're setting the clear goals, right? So what are the top three things that you want to achieve by that time? Be very specific. Then you're going to identify your why, because of course, it's very important to understand why these things are important to you, because there will be times when you don't want to do the work which is, you know, that's normal. That's uh, humanity, right? Sometimes we just don't want to do the work, but when we understand what's driving us forward, sometimes we can muster up and just do the thing. Uh, and along with the why, it's how is this going to impact your life, right? So it's understanding the impact. And then visualize the success. So just picture yourself having achieved the goal how do you feel? What does your life look like? Who are you as a person? What do you think? What do you do, right? And then now you've looked forward, you've looked back, we're going to look at today. And this is where we assess our current actions and their alignment with our goals. So what are you doing today that is moving you closer to your goals? What habits and routines are helping your progress? And then on the flip side, what are the obstacles, right? What uh, actions are holding you back? What habits are holding you back? And why do you think you take these actions? What are the things that that make you uh, decide, yeah, today I'm actually going to have a donut because it's in the in the in the break room versus knowing that you're trying to make a healthier choice? or um, you know, why do you not um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something on the fly, but it's not coming. Things that you do in the moment, maybe, you know, you know what? I don't wash dishes every night. Okay. So, you know, what? why do I not do that? And is it helping me towards my goals of having a clean house? Sure it would. So starting to understand some of those things. Why do you not do them? And then making the adjustments. What are one to two simple steps that you can start taking to help you move closer to that vision, to that future goal. So that's the process. Those are the questions. Um, you look back, you look forward, you look today. Then you apply your insights. And once you reflected on these three areas, apply application, right? You're comparing where you are today with where you want to be. And you're starting to think about that, um, that disparity, right? What's the difference? Uh, and then planning for success. So what is it that you need to learn, to do, to think differently? What hurdles can you anticipate and how can you overcome them, right? So we're just starting to think through this a bit more in detail because having a plan, while it's not going to mark something in stone for us, it is giving us the ability to be a little mentally prepared for when things happen or don't happen. And then we commit to action. So the action part, what specific actions are you going to commit to taking? And they don't have to be big. You can totally start, start small. The smaller, the better sometimes, because that is what gets you those little baby steps to build the momentum, to just start taking the action to get you more motiva motivated, right? So motivation doesn't always come from within, if it ever, but you can get motivated when you start to see, hey, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. And then you keep going. So you could just be mapping out some of these habits that you want to focus on over the coming weeks. That could be what your plan is, um, the plan of action. So 
That's the process. Retrospection is a powerful tool for personal transformation because it allows us to pause, which is so important, rather than just continuing to rush, 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 go, 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 like pause, take a moment to think about what's going on, right? And thoughtfully evaluate your experiences. So by looking back at what has worked for us um, and what hasn't, we gain those valuable insights into behaviors, habits, decisions. And this reflection helps us understand the reasons behind our success and our setbacks, which then again, fosters a deeper self-awareness. When we extract the lessons from our past experiences and consciously apply the learnings, that's when we can make more informed choices. We can avoid repeating mistakes. We can continuously improve. And in essence, Regular retrospection empowers us to align our actions with our goals, which then drives meaningful progress and personal growth, right? And that is how you get to your transformation, which then takes us to the energizing habit for this week. Can you guess what it is? So I'd invite you to take some time today or this week um, or maybe trying to do a little little inkling every day and see how that feels for you. But going through the four question retrospective, so the short version, right? What went well? What didn't go well? What did I learn? And how can I apply these learnings to make it better for tomorrow? Now, again, you can use it for anything. You can go back and look at the entire day. Was there a meeting that went really well or maybe it really sucked? Um, could be what you had for lunch or for dinner. But the key is to focus on the wins, right? Celebrating yourself is so, so important. And the application of what you learned. Because that becomes your action steps, right? And write down your thoughts. It makes the uh, it makes the process that much more powerful, right? Um, and so you can capture the moment. And so as you're looking back later as a part of your future retrospection you can kind of see the changes that you've had that you've um, made over time so now remember just like in project management continuous improvement is key right it's not about perfection we're not trying to be you know spot on right out of the gate we just want to continually improve day over day week over week towards our transformation and that how that happens when we're taking a look at how it's going what's working, what's not working, and then adapting. Now, if you're feeling stuck by um, retrospectives, how to use them, how to apply to uh, them in your own personal transformation, this is a key uh, key focus in my Energy to Thrive project. And I really encourage my clients to take the time for this process. And we use it on our coaching calls, right? And so if if you hadn't done the homework, of um, doing your own retrospection, we're going to do it on the call, right? We're going to talk through what went well, what didn't go well, what did you learn and how do you apply it? And if you would like to learn more about uh, this program or in how to get support in doing your own retrospection, please email me. Uh, It's Vicky, V-I-C-K-Y at Uplift Healthy Lifestyle. I'd love to chat more about it with you. Um, and you know, it's just important to remember that you can change your life without overhauling your lifestyle and it happens through continuous improvement. So that is what I have for you today. If you found this episode helpful, if you found learning about retrospectives helpful, I want to hear from you. So do me a favor, like the episode, whatever platform you're listening on, take a screenshot and, um, tag me in your Instagram stories. Um, if you're not on Instagram, Facebook, same thing at uplift healthy lifestyle. I would love to hear how this, um, practice, how this episode, um, can, is making an impact in your health and wellness journey and stay tuned. The next episode should be the one where I share my first month, my first few weeks going through my journey of the energy to thrive project. So I'm going to tell you what I worked through how it went. It's going to be kind of like a retrospection, um, giving you a a little peek through uh, the curtain into the window, whatever you want to say, um, as to what the the program is like and um, how it it can help. Maybe you can think about how it would apply to you. So 
look forward to sharing that with you. And otherwise, have an energized day.